So class, let's proceed to the second last lesson, which is all about the framework. So we have the theoretical, conceptual, and operational. Super real quick lang tong discussion na to class. First thing first, you already understand the concept of the conceptual framework. So tuturuan ko na lang kayo on how to select best of the best related theories for your ongoing study at the same time, how to design it. Okay. And lastly, the operational framework. So class, akala ninyo, ginagawa nyo siya, pero hindi nyo pala alam na operational yung tawag sa kanya. And we will have a reason for that later on along the duration of the discussion. So class, when we say frameworks, conceptual man yan, theoretical or operational, we are actually talking or dealing about the variable. So since we are dealing with a quantitative study, our variables must, okay, must be measurable. It can be in a form of nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. Kung nakalimutan na class, si nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio, you can have our, okay, this recorded discussion plus the PowerPoint presentation, our Google Classroom. But okay, just to remind you, hindi ko naman ipapa-approve yung proposal ninyo if your variables, specifically the sub-variables, are not in a form of a measurable scale. Okay? All right. So why variables so important in a framework class? It's because, okay, starting from the title and for you to formulate specific questions on your statement of the problem, you must delimit or limited already the variables that you want to investigate with. At the same time, class, these variables, okay, must be visible, okay, on your conceptual framework at the same time with your theoretical framework. Okay, how and why? Let's proceed to the discussion. For a recap class, Again, the essence, the purpose of the conceptual framework by reading our definition here on our slides. Kindly read. Yeah, for our graded recitation. Group one, huh? Okay, yes. We have Jasmine. Yes, Jess. Conceptual framework connects the researcher to existing knowledge, serve as the foundation of the variables and their connection to make the study more specific. Yes, thank you, Jasmine. Class, this is the thin line between, okay, the difference between an essay and a research paper. Okay, the, the essence of related literature and studies on your paper is to provide scientific, okay, concrete reason why your study is worth investigating. And my new class, you cannot come up or derive with a conceptual framework if you don't have the related literature and studies kasi tandem silang dalawa and same goes with theoretical framework and related theories tandem din sila okay and class automatically when you're dealing with a quantitative study meaning to say uh, it is highly required that you have related theory. Mga bakit pinag-usapan si related theory? Dito mo naman tayo conceptual framework. Okay, na-overwhelm na kasi ako. Ang sarapas niya i-discuss ng dire-direction. Okay? Class, that is the function of the related theories and a related literature and studies. Okay? For you to draw, design your conceptual framework. At the same time, saan ba nang gagaling? Paano ba kumukuha ng literature and studies? Depende to class with your variables. Kaya if you can still recall, for you to draw your conceptual framework, kailangan klaro. Klaro yung inyong variables. Okay? So class, can uh, pa-recall lang natin ulit. Recall lang natin. These are the elements in designing a framework. Hindi natin kailangan ng butterfly dito. Okay, mga fig... Uh, diagram like hearts and so and whatsoever na nakikita ko sa Facebook. Okay? Research design. Grabe, no? Literal na design. So, class framework here we need boxes or rectangles. Okay? But, um, pinaka-importante is you know and understand okay? The purpose and 
function of line, single arrow, and double arrow in a conceptual framework. Sabi nga, who among he, you here can still recall, okay, the differences between, okay, line, single arrow, and double arrow in a conceptual framework. Yes, Lauren? Um, based po sa past discussion natin, when we say po kasi na line lang yun nasa conceptual framework, parang it signifies lang po na parang description lang po siya. And when we say naman po yung, yung arrow na isang side lang, like one-sided arrow, pinapakita po niya na may relationship po between the IV and the DV. And when we say double arrow naman po, ginagamit naman po siya when yung study niyo po is experimental na po or may experiment po nangyayari. Yes to show, to determine if there is a causal relationship or yung cause-effect relationship. Kasi when we, when we say relationship or correlational, one way lang siya. Okay? Thank you so much for that refresher, Lauren. Yes, that is correct. So, we have here an example. Okay? Sabi ko sa inyo, magre-refresh lang muna tayo for a while. Okay? So, we have here your IV and the DV. Okay, so we use here the single arrow, meaning we're seeking, looking for the relationship between unemployment and poverty. So class, for this time, this is the basic. That is the basic. So we have now here a modified conceptual framework depending class, okay, on the questions you have on your statement of the problem. Okay, so class, on our first conceptual framework here, it is automatic that you already have three, okay, specific questions. Number one, specific question for intended for your independent variable, and then your second question for your dependent variable, and the last question is answerable by yes or no, okay, showing either the effect, relationship, influence, or impact. Okay, so now we have here the second conceptual framework. Okay, wala naman na bago class. Nandito pa rin, we're seeking, looking for the relationship between the IV and the DV. It's just that class, okay, on your specific questions, on your statement of the problem, you are also looking, asking for the demographic profile of your respondents. So, gagamit lang tayo dito, a line, line lang. Okay, just the description of your respondents. And now here we have another box here. Okay. After determining, okay, between the relationship of the IV and the DB, what comes next class? Example, kung meron ng relationship, what will be the end game of your study? Do you think it's, it's enough to just simply know that there is a relationship between your IV and DB? Para kang guma, humanap ng problema, pero anong nangyari? Kawabayan mo na lang yung respondents muna. Unemployed forever? Definitely, you need to come up with a resolution or solution on that situation. Okay? Based on the findings of your study. Okay, so class, kung gag if gagawa tayo ng question on this, parang ganito yung tura, uh, ganito siya. What would be the suggested recommendation based on the findings of the study? Ganun siya. Parang there's another question found on your specific questions for you to have this. Okay, so class, babalikan ulit nyo yan yung conceptual framework niyo because you already have this, di ba, on your assignment. Yan. You can actually modify your conceptual framework because this one, the first one, this is the basic of all basic conceptual framework. Okay. And what's the essence of the basic? For you to create your own style. Okay. Explore and experiment. So you can modify your conceptual framework depending on the questions you have on your statement of the problem. Okay. All right. So now let's have the theoretical framework. Kindly read the essence, the purpose of theoretical framework on our on your paper. Yes, Elaine. 
theoretical framework draws support from time-tested theories that embody the findings of many researchers on why and how particular phenomenon occur. Exactly. Class, remember this. The essence, okay, the essence of related literature and studies to your paper for you to have a very good conceptual framework, diba? aside from a very good statement of the problem. Okay, now we need theoretical framework and related theory for you, class. Okay, provide uh, to answer the why and how such problem exists. Okay, do sa literature and studies class related yan sa ongoing study ninyo. Whereas the theory plus the theoretical framework yan naman ang magre reason wo, magre reason out. Okay, why your study exists. Okay, bakit nangyayari siya ngayon? Okay, that is why class, kung um, bakit hindi lo ang ilagay, bakit theory, di ba the highest of uh, level of information is lo kasi unbreakable siya. As theories, okay, time tested yan. The, the, the reason why we're conducting studies is to 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 determine, to justify if that certain theory. Okay. Um applicable pa rin nowadays. Okay? All right. That is the essence of the related theory plus theoretical framework on your paper. So, hindi lang enough class, okay, na meron tayong literature and studies to connected sa study natin. But we also need theories to determine, okay, to answer the why, the why and how this such phenomenon, this problem is recurring nowadays. Okay? Alright. So, hindi kayo pinapahirapan ng research teacher nyo class, ha? Okay. So, now, how to select? Okay. Paano ba pumili, Ma'am Kang, ng, ng theory related to our study? So, let's have this. Okay. In selecting class, the related theory for your study, make sure balik kayo with your research title SOP plus the variable. Okay, class, the, the key for you to derive to look for a best theory for your study is to go back with your variables. Ayan, kaya gigil na gigil si mamukang sa variables. Okay? And another way, class, review the related literature or even the studies. Why, class? Definitely, class, upon reading literature studies, okay, na related with your study, may mga nagamit na yan na mention ng mga related theories. Okay? At pwedeng-pwede nyo yung gamitin or i-adapt. Mami, hindi po ba yun counted as plagiarism? No. Okay, we have the idea, the context between replication and duplication class. When we say replication, baka magugulat kayo, ma'am ka, grabe. Yung study po pala namin, may kahawig na kahawig. Okay, but class, hindi yung plagiarism. Because probably, magkaiba kayo ng set of respondents and definitely, you'll be having different findings. Okay, that is replication and that is acceptable class. Pero iba yung usapan kapag duplication. Ito yung, yung sobrang kapal na ng mukha mo. Diba? Kiniklaim mo pa na ikas isa kang researcher. Pero kinopya mo naman lahat-lahat. And that is duplication. Alright? Okay. So next class, kapag nakapili na, ng what do you call this, related theory para ka nang gagamit dito ng SEC approach. Because you are now about to discuss the theory and how it is related to your ongoing study. And that will be the time na drawing mo na yung theoretical framework mo. Okay, later I'll show some example. Okay, so next class, what Okay, are the things that we need to include in writing the related theory. Okay, the first one class, the title of the theory, followed by the theories or the proponent. Class, para lang tong related literature and studies. Kapag walang author, kabahan ka. Baka kasi less legit yan or illegitimate talaga and not reliable. 
Okay? Same goes with related theories. Marami kayong may encounter class online na ang daming theories, pero walang proponent or walang theories sa nag-impose nun. Okay? Kaya pumili kayo. Okay? You need to filter out and select the best one. And then, followed by the theoretical principle. When we say theoretical principle class, it has something to do with the E of the SEC approach, which is explain what's with that theory. Okay, and then last part, relevance of that related theory to your study. This is the letter C on the SEC approach, contextualizing. You need to connect, not just simply explain, okay, how this related theory, okay, has relevance or connection with your ongoing study. Okay? So, kasi bago ko makalimutan, ha, baka may magtatanong, ma'am, gaano karaming related theories yung kailangan namin? Okay? The answer for that question, class, is depending on how many variables on your study. Plus variables lang, ha, hindi kasama yung sub-variable. Just your IV and the DV. Good for two to three theories, okay na. One for the uh, uh, one theory intended for your independent variable and another one for your dependent variable. You are more than lucky enough, class, kung makakahanap ka ng theory that could actually justify, connects, okay, your IV and DV. Okay, tsagaan nyo lang maghanap. Pero two theories, class, ideal na siya. But at the end of the day, you have to depend the number of the theory Okay, on your variables. Alright? Okay. So, with that, let's have this example. Okay. We have here the conceptual framework. Okay, your IV and the DV. So, like what I've said to you, class. Okay. Under unemployment, your IV. Marami kayong masasearch online. Okay pertaining to unemployment, okay? Pero ang pinili ko is microeconomic theory. Ang premise kasi class, yung concept ng microeconomic theory is that um, nasa tao, okay, yung decision on how uh, he or she, ano to? Decide, okay, sa limited income niya. Ano, anong gagawin niya kapag meron lang siyang limited income, source of income? Okay, kasi nga unemployed siya. So now we have here the dependent variable which is poverty. And again, class, marami kayo may encounter na related theory for this. Pero ang pinili ko is the structural theory. Because the premise of the structural theory is that mm -hmm, the society or the majority is tawag dito mas may say compared sa individual. So, meaning to say, class, it will become a burden if majority of our population ay unemployed. Because this, this will draw a line na there is an existing poverty on that certain country. Okay? All right. So, ganun, ganun mag-derive ng related theory. Okay? You have to focus on your variables. Okay? Alright. So, now we have the last framework. Okay. Ito yung babasag sa uh, una nating pagkakaintindi. Plus, the operational framework is only exclusive if your study is an output base in nature. I repeat, you'll be having an operational framework if your study is an output base. Okay? When we say output, class, it can be an advocacy, campaign, product, software, application, or even a device, and etc. The thing is, kung pagkatapos mismo ng, ng research, okay, meron kang mag derive na output, okay, there you need an operational framework. Class kasi, yung conceptual and theoretical framework, para yan sa paper. The flow of the paper. Okay? While si operational framework, 
para naman siya for your study hall, this output of your study. That is why class, ang maikita niyo sa operational framework is the input process and the output. Pero I don't know kung mag-agree kayo sa akin. Usually, sa conceptual framework, IPO yung ginagamit. Tama ba? Meron bang gumamit ng IPO before? for his or her to come up with his or her conceptual framework. Meron ba? Okay, wala nga amin. Okay, kasi class, kapag nag-check ako ng paper, pag na-invite ako sa iba't ibang school, yung conceptual framework nila, okay, is in the form of the IPO, which is not ideal because the IPO is intended, okay, for operational framework. And the operational framework is ideal intended if your study is an output base. Conceptual framework is different from operational framework. Okay? Because on the conceptual framework, you have your variables. In operational framework, kasama dito class the process on how you're going to derive with your output. Okay? Let's have here an example. So class, this is our conceptual framework, sample kanina, and this is the theoretical framework, okay? And now we have the operational framework, the I, P, O, input, process, and the output. So, class, in the input, in case, class, ha, na analysis-based yung study ninyo. So, more likely, advocacy campaign yung magiging output ng study dito. So, for the input, you just have to copy here your statement of the problem, but in a form of declarative. Okay? And then the process, definitely, it is templated. Survey, data gathering, data analysis. And if you want to seek for the expert views regarding on the findings of the study, you may. This is my favorite. Okay? After dealing with the quantitative part, nalaman mo na yung yung sagot of your respondents through survey class. Um, Idediretso ko yan with a certain expert, okay, para tanong ko sa kanya na bakit kaya naging ganito yung findings? Ano yung potentiality na bakit ganito yung naging findings? Okay, at ang sarap niyang i-share with your panelists, okay, during the presentation or defense. And next class, the output, it can be, actually, nakasanayan na at hindi naman siya bawal, okay, na pwede mo nalang ilagay dito your research title or the, the final uh, end product of your, of your study. Okay? But in case class, kung software yan, device, prototype, definitely iba yung input. Diba? Ano yung mga materials na ginamit and then the process for you to be able to come up with that prototype and the title of your study. That is why, class, the operational framework is for the part of the output of the study, whereas the, the conceptual and theoretical framework intended naman siya, class, for the paper. Nakita niyo yung nila. Okay. To sum it up, class, okay, conceptual framework, katandem niya, class, the related theory, ay, related study, sorry, sorry, Ulitin natin. Ayoko yun. Ayoko yung part na yun. Last when we say relate uh, conceptual framework, okay, we are talking about the related literature and studies plus the variables connected with your ongoing study. And then, the related theory plus the conceptual framework, it is for the answering the how and why your study exists or is existing. And the Operational framework is for the output, intended for the output of your study. So class, pag may nagtanong sa akin, Ma'am Kang, pwede po bang wala kaming operational framework? Pwede, lalong-lalo na kung wala naman anong output or out, anong tawag dito, derive after nakandak yung findings ng study. Okay ba? Huwag kayong iiyak ha, ma'am, kasi diniscuss niyo po yung operational framework, kaya kailangan may operational framework kami. Hindi. Depende yan with the objective of your study. Okay? Alright. 
So questions, clarifications, kayang-kaya? Okay, proceed na tayo with the last part of the chapter 1. Okay, klaro class ha. Sana klaro dahil klaro, hindi dahil tinatamad na lang magtanong. Class, remember, okay, um, wala tayong final examination sa Practical Research 2 because yung equivalent nun is your chapter 1. So, members, please cooperate ha, collaborate with your leader. Why? Kasi sa kanila, sila yung magbibigay ng grade nyo. Okay ba? Pero don't you worry, we'll be having the unit test. Probably this week din siya. Sa second day natin. Mom, holiday po yun, Wednesday. Bibigyan ko ng time for that. Okay? Hindi naman ako madamot when it comes to, in terms of deadline. Doon tayo sa part na hindi kayo nagigipit. Pero sana naman, class, no? Hindi yun nag kumakain ng salad yung lahat tsaka grahams tapos tayo nagsusulat pa ng paper at nagsasagot pa ng unit test, ha? Huwag naman tayo nga abot sa ganung punto ng buhay natin. Okay? Alright. So, class, welcome to the last part, okay, of the chapter 1, the significance of the study plus the definition of terms. Huwag may stress, hindi ito mahaba, class. Tuturuan ko lang kayo, bibigyan ko lang kayo ng hints on how to write the significance of the study plus the definition of terms. Ayan. So, class, what is the essence of the significance of the study? Okay, based on the slide we have here. Sige na, pabasa na. Pagod na. <laughs> okay, sino tong one more? Aside from Lauren and Ellie, yes, Alexandria bilang ikaw ang unang-unang taong nag-in sa GMIT natin kanina. Um, signif significance of the study, it is as at this point that the researcher described who will benefit and what benefits can be derived from the findings of the study. Exactly. Last, ito yung sinasabi kong technical format on how you're going to the significance of the study. Observe the inverted pyramid from the most important beneficiary down to the least one. So let's have an example para ma-picture ng mas malinaw sa inyo. Okay, yung sa sinasabi ko. So let's have this first. The, the, the things that we need to include in writing our thoughts. Sorry na class ha. gusto ko sinaga acronym. Okay, when we say SAD, scope and delimitation, SOT, significance of the study, DOTS, definition of terms. Okay, so we have the intro statement, as always. Diba? Hindi naman mag-direcho agad magbibigay ka ng list who will be the beneficiary of, okay, of your study based on the findings of the study. So next class, the, the, the list of your beneficiary plus the reason. So let's have here an example. Okay, we have here a, a, a title, a sample study, Anti-Intellectualism, an analysis on the interpersonal, interpersonal skills of STEM achievers. Ang premise kasi ng study na to class, based on the portrayal of the media, okay, yung mga tinatawag natin nerd, um, walk in dictionary, the genius, the highly intellectual individuals. Tinitignan natin sila or pinortray sila, pinortray sila as, you know, introvert. Okay? So, ito yung premise ng study na to. Gaano katotoo na ganun nga. ba? So, we have here, okay, the intro statement. Upon the completion of the study, it will be of importance to the following. Ito yung sinasabi ko, class, na formatting natin the flow from the most important beneficiary down to the least one. Okay, so we have the students here and then academic achievers. Class, they are also counted as students, pero mas may distinct, okay, feature lang sila compared kay student. So next, we have the parents. Teachers, tignan ninyo, class. Papunta yung pa-organization. The guidance officers, offices na tayo. And then the Department of Education, papunta na tayo sa department. 
okay, down to the social psychologist. And then class, as always, actually parang templated na to, eh, given siya palagi, the list, okay, beneficiary will be the future researcher who wish to replicate your study. Imagine, ganun kaganda yung study ninyo para i-replicate yan, okay, ng mga future researcher. Okay, ganun lang kasimple class, writing the significance of the study. Now, let's have the definition of terms. So, class, tuturuan ko kayo dito, what are the words that we need or we must include on the definition of terms? Hindi to trip lang natin since high polluting word siya, since unfamiliar word siya, ilalagay na natin. No, meron tayong criteria. Okay, on what words we should put and define on the definition of the on definition of terms. The first one class, okay. Tandaan niyo the wag nung pakakawalan yung variables of your study. Okay, these are the words that need to be defined. Okay, na dapat makita on your dots or the definition of terms. Remember that. Why? We, we need to disclose, class, the definition of your variables because probably, class, um, definition nila sa variable na yun, on a certain variable, iba sa so gusto nyong aralin. So, dapat sa definition of, of terms, klaro, okay, what is the definition of that certain variable. Okay? Next naman, class, is the words na counted as local. Example, the word Oplan Tokhang or the Tokhang itself. It falls under local class kasi hindi naman lahat ng tao okay, aware okay, what is Tokhang, right? So you need to include that on our definition of terms. Next class, the jargon. Okay, jargon. Jargon, when we jargon, these are the technical words, specific in a certain certain profession. So, ano ba example natin? Example lang ha, status quo. Parang babaw na example ko. Wala na akong maisip na, syempre, definitely, hindi naman lahat familiar what is status quo. So, kasi, napo-fall yun in the field of medicine. Okay? Jargon siya. And then, lastly, class, scientific. Definitely, no? Hindi naman lahat scientist. So, you need to Okay, um, provide the meaning of that, okay, on the definition of terms. Okay, so hindi lang po trip lang natin kung anong lalagay natin words sa definition of terms. At wala rin mang tatanong class kung ilang words ba ang kailangan nakita sa definition of terms because it always depends on the content of your research paper. And then last class, we have two ways in defining word and you're very aware on this. The operational and the conceptual. Pero class, magka, magkaisa na tayo. Okay? Uh -huh. I am requiring you to use the operational. Operational way in defining the, the words. Ma'am, bakit? Kasi class, kung kaya naman siyang ibigay, okay, by the way, operational is the exact meaning of such word. Okay, by using Merriam Dictionary, Oxford, Webster's. Okay. Pero hindi ko naman sinasara yung idea, yung 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 choice ninyo na gusto nyo mag-conceptual. Pwede rin naman, class. What I'm trying to say here is, kung kaya naman siyang ibigay yung meaning na yun through dictionaries, why not? And then you just have to insert the citation. Pero wala nang year, ha? Baka isa-search nyo pa kung kailan, anong taon ginamit yung word na yun. No need. Okay? But you have to paraphrase it. Okay? So, conceptual naman class. Okay? These are the words defined. Okay? On how it is being used or defined on your research paper. Let's have an example. STEM. The word STEM. Diba? The exact meaning of STEM probably is a part of the plant. Diba? Pero, based okay, on the paper, on your paper, the STEM defined as science, engineering, mali. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Diba? 
So hindi ko din naman sinasara yung pintuan if you want to have your dots using the conceptual way or manner. Okay ba? Pero it's more than okay na sa akin class if you'll be using the operational. Okay? Okay tayo. So I think that is the end of our discussion in class i think this this our last meeting because next week allotted na yon for the finals week at ayoko naman gambalahin yung time na yon gusto ko nagre ready na lang kayo in reviewing at the same time if you want to have na to finish your chapter 1 in class, wait na lang tayo sa instruction to be posted on our Google Classroom. Dalawang rubrics yung ilalagay ko doon class. The first rubric is writing your chapter 1. Remember class, your chapter 1, ang equivalent yan will be your um, final examination. Okay, and then in tenure in class, kung an, sa ang G folder nyo siya, i-turn in or isa-submit. And then the second rubric, the second rubric is for the peer grading. Leaders, I want to emphasize this. And sorry for the term, agad-agad. Magkaiba yung mabait sa tanga anak, okay? When we say mabait, okay, you're being considerate on the situation of your, your classmate. But at the end of the day class, you enrolled in this subject, so pangatawanan mo, panindigan mo. Lahat tayo may mga personal issues sa buhay. Gas-gas na itong reason na to, but it is true. And when we say, yun nga, na-explain ko na rin mabait at sa tanga. Kaya hindi umunod yung Pilipinas class kasi marami mga taong umaasa, dumetepende sa taong capable and willing. Okay ba? Ang kakaintindihan. So, leaders, huwag kayong malulungkot, mafe-feeling guilty kung mabababa yung grade ng klase ninyo. Maging fair kayo sa mga naging efforts ng bawat isa. Kaya nga, literally, it is payback time. Pero sana, leader, no? Uh, leader tayo uh, to guide our classmate not to be a bossy one. Okay. Yes, Elaine, may tanong Elaine, may concern or okay, napindot lang. Po. Okay, napindot lang. Okay. So, are we good? Walang gustong itanong. Okay, class. Do sa deadline na sinet ko December 20 tama for the chapter 1. Parang Monday na pa Monday deadline ano? Sige, isasabay ko na class December 22 kung kaya. Kasi December 22, yung last day namin, reporting day namin sa school. So, isasabay ko na rin for your deadline. So, instead of December 20, 22 na yung deadline natin for the chapter 1. Para more more time kayo to write. Okay? Pero class ha, huwag na papaabutin hanggang Noche Buena ha. Enjoy niyo yung Christmas break. Okay? Alright, so with that, stop recording na ako. And you can now have your rest. And keep safe. Bye-bye.